welcome back. We have just completed installing the, uh, the network card and the PC card into the wrist PC. And I'm just checking that we still work. For some reason it seems to have crashed, but not to worry, we'll just hit that reset button. Our reset button's gone. There it is. We need to keep an eye on that, so it could be that um, extra stick of RAM I chucked in. That's not a RISC PC, that's a Windows 10 PC. There we go. So that does seem to be locking up now, actually, which is interesting. So that has actually locked up completely. So I'm going to power it off. And what I'm going to do is remove that RAM stick that I put in. So I think this will actually be quite an interesting thing to video. And that is basically the troubleshooting exercise that I'm going through. It's something that you tend to employ on all hardware, be it old or modern. And that is to start from the absolute beginning. So what I've done is I've taken out my podule, I've taken out my PC processor, and I'm running it with just the 32 megabytes of RAM and the ARM processor. And it starts and it runs. I also did a power on R to reset the, uh, the CMOS RAM. And that has allowed me to get the machine up and actually configure it ready to start again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the PC card back in, like so. It just slots in there. And we're going to power the machine back on again. So hard drive spins up. And it's powering on by the looks of it. So if we take a look at the monitor, we can actually see what's going on. And that does seem to be going into Risk OS quite happily. So there we are, we're in Risk OS. We can access the hard drive, we can go into boot. Something that wasn't working earlier was this network option, so if we go into that, that now pops up with that. And if I remember rightly, Control Shift F12 shuts the machine down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add in the extra RAM that I took out earlier. And we're also going to add in the module as well. In fact, we'll do the RAM first. So we'll just pop the RAM in. There's the RAM. Power the machine back up. Wait for that to come up. So it's beginning to boot. So there we go. Accessing the hard drive. There we go. It's recognised the amount of RAM that's in there. Still seems to be working okay. And there we go. So we're now in with 64 megs of RAM. And let's try and access a few things on the hard disk. Let's try and, f not that the applications are that big, let's see if we can fill up some of the RAM. AR player. There's AR player. Uh, what else could we load up? PsyCalc. There's a scientific calculator. Uh, what else have we got? We've got tools, which has... Oh yeah, that's got the various compression tools. Oh, help for lunch, out to lunch. That's the um, screensaver, if I remember rightly. I can't remember how you set it up, though. There we go. That seems to be okay. So the next thing we're going to do is to put the podule back in. So, Control Shift F12, power off, back over to the machine, and there we're going to pop in the podule. So, podule goes into the back, into the podule slot, like so. We've got the podule card. I'm not going to screw it in yet, but we are just going to feed that into the back of the machine. Press that in. 
there. Now, what I'm going to do is actually do an R power on. So, and up to the monitor, holding down the R key. Release the R key. And it seems that it's that podule that kills it. So if I power this off again, hold down delete and power on. This is a very, very hard reset that we're doing now. And we don't seem to have any life. So it looks like we've either got a problem with that expansion card or we have a problem with the back plane itself. So let's power it off. Let's pop out the expansion card. And let's power it back on again and see if it comes up. And there doesn't seem to be any life on that one, unfortunately. So let's power it off. Remove the back plane, power it on again. And it now posts. So it looks like we have a problem with the back plane itself it doesn't seem to enjoy having this four-way back plane installed so i'll need to look into that because actual hardware isn't exactly complicated there's a what looks like a regulator there series of inline capacitors a couple of resistors a load more resistors more capacitors and these chips at the top so it's not exactly a complicated piece of circuitry. What I will do is power it off, isolate it from the power supply, there we go that should earth it and get rid of any residual charge. I'm actually going to clean up these pins on the base of the module expansion back plane because this did come out of a machine that had the CMOS battery corrosion so I'm just wondering if it's making a bad contact into the uh, back plane slot so that's that's those cleaned up a bit get some switch cleaner onto them as well there we go switch and contact cleaner that is into the machine and down make sure that is firmly home which it is plug it back in power it back up seems to post hard drive activity and that seems to be doing something so let's take a look and see if it is loading. That seems to be coming up. So the next thing we're going to do is focus on the expansion module itself. So there's going to be no mouse because I've obviously done a hard reset. So I'll need to do a configure mouse type 1. And that should bring me back with the mouse. Yep, there we are. And we can access the hard drive, go into boot, go into sound, and we can turn on our 16 bit sound. Go into screen. Yep, we're in an acceptable screen mode for the moment. Go into network. That seems to still load. So the next thing we're going to do is shut down, 
and we're going to pop in the pod job. But before we do that, I'm going to do a little bit of switch and contact cleaner onto the pins. Lower the pod job into the machine and into there. There we go, and power it on. There she goes, she's booting up. Should be coming to the Risk OS desktop shortly. There you go. So it looks like that would be where the network drive would reside. So if we go into boot and network, this is where it may throw up an error. It doesn't. Oh, look at that. Access. We have, it has actually found that network card. So enable access, set also set up the internet we will enable our TCP IP suite uh, we'll give this a host name of risk PC 600 we've got our host file as well so we'll just set that up uh, extra options that's a configuration file so we've got routing Gateway is going to be 192.168.0.1. Incidentally, I don't know if this even works, but let's see. Interfaces, slot 0, I cubed for LAN 500, we're going to configure. Uh, Netmask is 255.255.255. .255 .255. IP address is going to be manual and I'll give it 192.168.0.168. So, reason for that is my SAN drive or NAS drive rather is 164. Um, I named it after the Alfa Romeo 164. For, I think it was Arabic countries, it was the Alfa Romeo 168 because the number 164 was bad luck or something like that. A bit of random car trivia for you. I'm not sure if it was Arabic or Chinese countries. I can't remember, but there was a reason why it was the Alfa Romeo 168 in certain regions. It's set. And enable, oh yeah, that's AUN, that's the network. So we've got the internet enabled, we've got access enabled. If I go to my PC, and open up a command prompt, and if we do ping 192.168 dot zero dot one six eight see if that returns a response if not we'll need to do a bit more configuration so we need to do a little bit more config I think so back onto the risk PC we have interface is configured so that's our IP address obtain IP address manually that's all done, that's set. Let's close that. Now, internet, routing, act as an IP router. Nope, we don't want to do that. Routes file, let's see what that's all about. So, star routes, .inet comp, for example. If your machine is connected to net one, you wish to establish a route to net two. 
Okay, that I think is routing. I'm not sure if that's default gateway or different routes that you can take. Host names. We've given ourselves a host name, used host files only. So the host file, if we open that up, that is very, that may look very familiar, because it is, but that is a very familiar looking host file. In fact, the host file on Windows and I think Linux systems is pretty much near identical to this. So what it has done is it has detected the um, so we'll set that, we'll set that, we'll close that. But it does seem to have detected the presence of the network card. So let's reset this now and see what it does. So that's going to reset now. And it's coming back up. Got a feeling, oh no. So there we go, that's coming back up. Another beep, it seems to signify general happiness. Root, right into root socket, network is unreachable. So let's retry. Oh, I'm wondering if it's trying to boot from a network. Let's cancel that. So that should be coming up. Oh, look at that. We've got our disks icon now. So does that give us that gives us resources disks that will probably populate if I start running Samba shares on various devices. Let's see if the PC now pings. So we've got the machine enabled. Let's do that. Oh, look at that. Yes, we are connected. The risk PC is connected to my home network. That's ace. Bloody fantastic. That is absolutely brilliant. Chuffed to bits with that. Let's uh, reassemble the machine. So, case layer. Gently over and down. So that's the second case layer in place. Uh, so, I'll get this reassembled. And when we're back, we'll see what we can do about actually sharing some files.